In today's episode, I'll be looking at how to categorize price action into different market regimes. Then based on that categorization, it's possible to use information to help filter the signals of a trading strategy. I'll be using what we've already learned in previous episodes about volatility filters and also trend filters and look at options for how these might be utilized to help with the process. And in my experience, using this technique based on the market regime categorization can help to better inform and define your trading strategies rules. Stay tuned. Last time, we looked at the concept of combining a trend filter with a trigger. And the example indicators we used were the Arun indicator for the trend filter and the simple stochastic indicator for the trigger. But of course, these were just example indicators to explain the concept. In actual fact, you could have chosen any number of indicators. And from my own experience, I'm aware of probably at least 10 indicators that can be used as trend filters, but there's probably more. And of course, in terms of indicators that you use for a trigger, there's hundreds, if not thousands available. And you will need to decide which of those indicators best meets the need of serving the premise of your own strategy. And to do this, you're probably going to have to undertake some research and following that due diligence process, you'll then probably robustly backtest your system to ensure that those indicators work in the way that you need them to. But although last time we just considered a trend filter and a trigger, of course, we've also covered the topic of volatility filters. So how do we bring these into the equation and how do we integrate these filters together? And it's that that's the topic of today's episode. Now, the detail of how you combine them will, of course, depend on your own trading strategy. But it's likely that your premise will be targeting one of these types of market regime, either a mean reverting market, a trending market, or one where the price action is about to break out of a trading range and maybe into a trend. And because there isn't anyone who understands your system as well as you do, you're going to have to come up with the precise rules that you'll use. However, there are some common patterns that are commonly used by traders, and I'm going to take you through these today. And of course, if you like, you can backtest these scenarios out for yourself on your own system to see how well they perform. So when I go through this process myself of categorizing the market regime, I tend to use a three by three matrix. Down the left hand side, I use a categorization for the volatility. So whether it's high volatility, medium or low. And then across the top, I have categorizations for the trending nature of the market. So whether it's in a downtrend, an uptrend, or not trending at all. And one of the things you can do with your own system after you are able to perform this categorization is to fill the matrix in so that you know how well your system performs in each of those sets of conditions. And as I said, this is just an example but if we follow this through for a trend following system, then after completing the exercise, you might find that your system does not perform well when the market isn't currently in a trend. And if this was the case, what this would be telling you is that you shouldn't trade this particular system when the market isn't trending. And for that, you could use filters to help prevent trades from opening during these times. Again, just as an example, you might find that your system doesn't perform well in low volatility. And so again, you could use a filter here to help you. Taking this further, you might find that short trades do well when the market is trending down. And of course, that makes logical sense because it's always easier to swim downstream a river than upstream. But likewise, when the market is trending up, you might see that long trades perform much better than short trades. 
And so now this matrix, based on your own backtesting, informs you about how you should tackle these market regimes in your trading. And the use of trend filters and volatility filters would help you to do that. So just to reiterate, the first stage here is to perform research using your own strategy to determine which market regimes it works well in and which it doesn't. Then you take that information and use that in your live trading system. Now, let's say instead of a trend following system, you've actually developed some kind of counter trend system. And when this is the case, you might find that those results are reversed. And now let's consider a mean reversion type system. Here, your research might determine that your system doesn't work well when the market is trending, either downwards or upwards. Equally, you might find that your system suffers when the volatility is particularly high. But you might also find that both long and short trades perform equally well in these two categorizations. And so again, based on this research you've undertaken, it will tell you when you should be trading your system. Now, so far in this series, in terms of the indicators we've looked at, these have all been oscillators. And this now concludes this section of the mini-series. And next, we're going to move on to a different class of indicator called a trend-following indicator. And in this, we're going to consider their use for both triggers and also trend filters again. Now, if that next episode where we start to look at this is already available, then you can find it at the top of the screen here. Please do remember to give me a like if you've got value from today. And until next time, trade safe.